this is a great turnout. I mean, this is supposed to be an intimate, you know, kind of coffee house sort of thing. So we had, we had to like move it out of the, we had another room planned. So I want to try to at least keep it intimate. I don't know how, but we'll try. Okay? Uh, welcome to the universe here. I gotta say it the way James Earl Jones said, Welcome to the universe. <laughs> you are here under this huge sphere. It is properly supported above your head. <laughs> when we first thought of uh, designing it, the natural thought was to support it from below. How else would you support a sphere? But views from the outside, it looked like a golf ball on a golf tee. He said, that's not cosmic. <laughs> and so the architects figured how to support it from the sides so that you walk under the sphere as though you are in space. So welcome to the Hall of the Universe. And if you have a chance before the evening's over, you can actually find Pluto. It is a speck on that planet wall there at the bottom grouped with other of its icy brethren in the outer solar system, the Kuiper Belt. That is where Pluto appears in this facility. Ten years ago, we were the first public institution to readjust Pluto's associations in the solar system, and we got in big trouble with the New York Times about that. But then the rest of the world caught on, and so now the hate mail has diminished significantly. <laughs> from third graders. <laughs> um, they've gotten over it, and so should you, I think. Uh, this evening, I'm, this, is, this is a cafe. It's a big cafe, but it's a cafe, and I want this to be principally an open session where I will walk among you, you ask questions. I'll toss up a few other sort of current events-y kinds of things just to warm you up, but this will be driven by your curiosity, not by my curiosity, okay? We have playing behind me the known universe. It is our first, our first YouTube video to go viral from this institution. You may have seen it. If not, you're not then among the three and a half million people who have. It's a zoom out from the surface of the Earth out to the edge of the known universe, produced here in collaboration with the Rubin uh, Museum of Art down in uh, Chelsea for an exhibit that's now closed, sorry, an exhibit that studied the ancient concepts of Far Eastern concepts of cosmologies, but we felt to complete that story, you include modern cosmology as well. And the zoom out, now we're zooming back in. So this will play the whole night, um, give you something to look at if you're tired of looking at me. Uh, just check it out, that's fine. So a couple other current events things, so you know Pluto's gone. It's still out there, but we have other relationships with it. Uh, we can talk about the past, present, future of NASA. We can talk about the black holes that were not made in the super collider in Switzerland. Many people thought the world would end. And speaking of ending of the world, uh, there's 2012. There are people still a little worried about that. Anyone here dragged by their friend to this event this evening who themselves is still worried about 2012? Raise your hand, you can be honest. You're afraid to say that in this the center of the universe. Okay, but we can, we can straighten that out if you'd like. Uh, other things, if you've forgotten what the latest is on dark matter, dark energy, uh, black holes, this is the chance. And this is a bit of statistic that I've shared on some YouTube somewhere. If you haven't seen it, uh, you will hear it now for the first time. There's about six and a half, seven thousand astrophysicists in the world. There's about six and a half, seven billion people in the world. Divide those two numbers, what do you get? <laughs> Thank you. Get Geek Row up here. He's got he's got the answer. One in a million. So if you ever find yourself in the company of an astrophysicist, that's the time to ask all the questions you have, because you never know the next time that will happen. Okay? <laughs> this is one of those occasions. Okay?